Good evening, everybody. Russell West Sound Network. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new and here, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a subscribe, all that good stuff. Maybe become a channel member. Why not? Why the bloody hell not? Hope you are all safe and well. Let me just uh, signpost you. I'll be doing it for every show the last few days, um, but it's really, really important. Uh, if you missed it last night, Tony Carr, we did a live Q&A with him. It was possibly my most favourite interview ever. Um, check it out. As I said, he will be back for a part two. He texted me. He had such a nice time. He wanted to come back on. So there will be a part two. Also, I did say I'll plug it for him. If you are in the Newham area uh, to, uh, on Saturday, 2 p.m., Newham Bookshop, uh, he's doing a signing of his book. If not, if you're at the going to the Everton game, midday, Foils Westfield is doing another signing there. So check it out. Available on Amazon and everything else as well. So anyway, um, tonight, 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 um, we have a another appreciation night. We obviously Julian, we're gonna do an appreciation night about Julian Dix. And I want all your comments about memories of Julian in the uh in the in the comments below and we'll uh, we'll come to them in the chat as and when uh, as always these things i'm joined unfortunately one of one of them is 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 stuck in croydon at the moment um and he <laughs> so he may well join us later on in terms of mr Shedman. but the ant to my deck the voice of london stadium mr martin Goddiman. how are we sir that's the nicest thing you've ever said the ant to my deck wasn't yeah. Ant one who had the car accident though isn't it the way he's one who got done for drink driving when it was the other yeah, one not not the perhaps one. such a great company no 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 um can i just before we go into the great julian dix um say oh, oh, and, um i noticed something quite interesting about that tony car thing tony car top bloke top of the tree bloke if you haven't seen that and if you didn't watch it live last night do look it up watch it a fantastic program and something i noticed interesting i thought who put that quote on Tony's book, and I noticed it's Frank Lampard Jr. had a lot of good things to say. There it is, a man who had such a huge impact on my career, and so when I was young, blah, 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 blah. Right, yeah. so note that, Frank Lampard Jr. And let's just ask ourselves, who might West Ham be playing while Tony Carr is signing those books yeah. before the game in Westfield? Who is about to take Everton to their first ever historical relegation who is going to shepherd them over the line do we think let's ask ourselves a question could it be the same person who put the quotation on the front of tony's quite book? quite possibly quite and possibly could, could, the, could the hiding they're going to get on sunday be the thing that sends them into a spiral uh, from open. which they never recover could it I, i'm he's, just asking the question he is open he is open he is open but yeah, now also, I mean, with with uh, we, when we spoke, obviously we were talking about Julian, but when we spoke with, with Tony, he was talking about Frank and and how you know, it, obviously he went around and interviewed everyone, and actually he didn't. He was interviewing Frank literally the week before he he left the Derby job. <laughs> So and now he's going to the book signing. Maybe, maybe the week before he leaves Everton. Who knows? The, 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 the parallels here are just incredible. Did you know that? I oh, look, we've scored. So I'm looking at a future run. I was telling um, Russ about it before. I've got this new television which actually shows you two weeks games into the future. And tonight <laughs> I'm watching Leon v West Ham. But the thing is, it hasn't yet told me how we got on at at um, London Stadium. So yeah. I'm seeing it. It does look like we've just scored. Looks like it might be been... Suchik. Hang on a minute. He's still wearing that headband. Yeah, he's, he's, still wear he's still wearing it, isn't he? He's still wearing right. it. Anyway, we scored. That's the good news, guys. I will try and find out how we got on in the first thing. But it does good. look like we're ahead at Leon. That's yeah. really good. Um, but yes, do you know that Frank Lampard Jr. played in Julian Dix's last game? Nice. I did another. I'm trying to make all these things go together. It was actually, it was, um, yes, the fact that he lost, uh, that we lost 4 0 at home to Arsenal, who we've still got to play this season. Yeah. Perhaps not worth uh, too much on, but we will look at. Let me just start as a sort of taster for tonight. This is the team, the last West Ham team that Julian Dix appeared for. Listen to this team. Talk about a mixture. And this is the team that finished fifth. In the Premier League, yeah. which remains our highest ever finish in the Premier League, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, so, is, yeah. even though he only played eight or nine games in that season, listen to this team. And this is the biggest mix up of teams. This is like the, 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 the total mix, mash mix up of football teams managed by Harry Redknapp. It has to be agreed. Naturally. Um, in goal, Shaka, Shaka Hislop, 
Tim Breaker. I don't even remember him playing he's that still, season. He's still but there playing. Is. Scott Minto. What? We, Ian uh, Peters. Surely we'd sold him by then. Rio Ferdinand. Had he started playing? Yes, he had. And there he is, Julian Dix. Trevor Sinclair? I, I can't remember this game. Frank Lampard Jr.? Paul Kitson? What? what? Paul Kitson, surely he'd gone. Then, then two players who were playing their second games for West Ham, Paolo Di Canio uh. and Mark Vivian Foy. And the substitute, Ayo Berkovic. How did that team <laughs> lose 4 0 to Arsenal? What? I mean, what? Yeah, but that was a diff that was an art that was an Arsenal team. That was a proper Arsenal team that if I remember. Wasn't that wasn't that I, I think there was a certain period of that when we used to watch Arsenal, obviously where I obviously uh, West Ham, oh, yeah, obviously yeah, really yeah. Sick. Bl bloody Wenger's just getting it together, wasn't he? Yeah, they were quite good then. Just for completion's sake, let's look at the Arsenal team. Seaman, who interestingly enough, I mean, these these links are unbelievable. Seaman, who play, who Dix played in the same side as the first time he played Upton Park. You can guess I'm thinking about that. In yeah. 1985, more about that later. Um, Seaman, Dixon, Winterburn, Vieira, remember him? Keown, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going with you here, Russ. I think you've, you've just pointed out Adams. We haven't got to the front players yet. Parla, yeah. Anelka, Petty, Bergkamp and Overmars. Kind of friend. Do you want to know who scored the four goals that night? Go on in. Bergkamp, Overmars, Anelka and Ray Parler. So Not not too shabby, were they? They weren't too well, they were a shabby team. But yeah, uh, I mean... Interesting it, thing, sorry, sorry to go on, go on you know, no, being no. facts and that. That was the game. Uh, that, that day, Glenn Hoddle was sacked as England boss. So... It's quite, I think there's a sort of symmetry there. Julian Dix, who was denied a place playing for England until he grew his hair. What? <laughs> Have you ever heard of anything so stupid? And they denied themselves what probably one of the very, very best left backs that England ever produced. But on that day, on the day of his last appearance at West Ham, Hoddle got sacked. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Glenn, if you're listening to the program. I'm sure but he is. I mean, for fuck's sake, you couldn't make that. It was Gorman, wasn't it? Who? Um, it was John. Yeah, it was Gorman. Thing about yeah. the hair when they were on holiday in Tenerife. It, if you watch, if you watch our interview with Julian, he, he speaks about it. I'm pretty sure it was in somewhere in Spain, and he said to it, you know, if you shake, he went, "Oh fuck off," and he went and shaved. Yeah, exactly. Him. Like I'm going to grow my hair for you. You know, like grow your hair. Don't aren't footballers told they're going to cut their hair? You imagine mm. Ian Bishop having. A shaven head, and and Dixie having really long hair. There's a little image for you. Oh dear, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That's a bit weird. <laughs> it's going to be such a fun night. I, I I've so been looking forward to this, Russ. There's yeah. some Dixie. We probably need a week to do Dixie. Oh, and yet definitely. you might say, why didn't I put him in my favourite Amazon eleven team? I put. Can you remember who I put? Just see if you follow this. I think I was the second one you ever did. Can he remember? I'll give you a clue. We've already done a program on him. Oh, you put in, um, was it Lampard Senior? It was indeed. Lampard yeah. Senior. Or the yeah. great player. Payer. I mean, player. I didn't mean the great payer, did I? So no. That's some other story about him. Yeah, it's different. Um, the great player, yes. The great player of Frank Lampard. He was my era. And that that's the, re that's the re only reason, guys and gals, that he gets the vote over Dixie. I, yeah. I mean, I know, I know I can see already all the stuff coming in now. How could I, how could I vote? You look at, um, and I'm going to let you have it soon, sooner or later, Russ, Harry Redknapp's actual favourite eleven, which he did do. And he, 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 he bottled it over the left back. He went for Dixie all the way through the programme. Then he went, you know, I suppose I'll pop up Frank in. And you think, no, you've been talking about Dixie all through the programme. Mm -hmm. And let's remember... And that was the man who brought Dixie back, having stood behind Billy Bonds going, yeah, 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 when Bonsie was getting rid of him. The yeah. minute the minute Bonsie, I always think that moving upstairs image is a bit kind of, it's a bit unpleasant, isn't it? It yeah. sounds like you're going to the next world. 
and anyway, they didn't move him upstairs anyway, but because uh, Billy was better than that, they just didn't move me up in next upstairs. But the minute Bonzi was on his way, uh, Harry's like, oh, oh, get him back, now. yeah, get on the phone, right? Or, uh, yeah, Graham Sunis, not Sounis, Sunis, Suchek, like Suchek or Sauchek, as everyone Sauchek or Suchek, yeah. that's the question. Yeah. Or so, he's so checked that bloke. He's so oh, checked. He scored, didn't he, last night? Or was it the night before? He scored, yeah, he scored international, yeah, day four, day four loss. Yeah. So remember the rip top. Yes, I sure do. This guy could rip top. Also, we can look at the fact that Julian Dix, so this is the West Ham Bible. I'm to hold it straight. The DVD book of West Ham United, but it's actually A to Z. And I'm just going to see. We've got Dickens and Dix. See? Yep. Dickens and Dicks, because these are the two Ds. Have we got any other Ds? I should make you guess, shouldn't I? Are there any other Ds in the West Ham? They've got to be all oh, Devonshire. No. Would you go? Oh, wait a minute. There's one other that I should have remembered. Devonshire. Dun, 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 dun. Paolo Di Canio. Pa Paddy Canio. John and Dick. John Dick. Yep, yeah, we spoke and about him yesterday. How could we forget? Defoe and Devonshire. Did you know how many brilliant players we had with the surname D? Can't well, forget. So, Stag, Brian Deer. Brian Deer, Mervyn, Merv the Swerve. And I that's mean, not including that. I mean, Dee McKayley, Dee McKay Diamante. Alan Derbishley. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I turned over one page. You turned over a too many there, mate. <laughs> are, we, are we about to roll the video? Are we yeah, well, going to give him yeah. something to look out for, haven't I? Yeah, something go on, you give him something for. to look out for. All right. Go on in. All right. So this just proves you've been watching. You've got to watch this because it's the longest one ever. It's nearly quarter, over a quarter of an hour, I think. But it's so, yep. if you don't know Julian Dix, I can't believe there's a Hammers fan out there who doesn't. In the next 60 minutes, you will never forget him. But I'm going to ask you something that is probably answered in this. And that is against who? Whom? Who? Against who did Julian Dix first appear at Upton Park. Which team did Julian Dix first make his appearance against at Upton Park? Good question there. So watch this, see if you can find out. Mm, let's have a look, let's have a look. Few Hammers fans, when questioned, realised that it was John Lyle who signed 19-year-old Julian Dix from Birmingham City for £300,000 at the end of March 1987. The following month, Billy Bonds played his last game for West Ham United and Julian Dix, his true successor, was already a first-team player. Dix's first spell at the club was as exciting as it was imbued with incident and controversy. Dix possessed a sweet left foot, equally capable of striking a ball with venom from 35 yards, as well as an opposition forward from three feet. He was sent off three times in just four months in the 1992-93 promotion season. Well, Dix still got to get out of trouble down there. And Julian Dix putting Franz Karl on the deck, the referee's reached for his book and that could spell trouble for Dix. And I think they might know what's coming next. Here's the offence, there was the elbow on Franz Karl, it was quite clear. And while we were watching that replay, the red card was out. And Julian Dix is off. And mistakes being made by both sides now as Julian Dix brings down Steve Bull. The crowd baying for blood here. I felt, in all honesty, Bull made a little bit more of that than it really was. He certainly brought him down, though. And it's the red card. It's the red card for the West Ham captain, Julian Dix. Dix left West Ham for Graham Souness's Liverpool in September 1993, only to return just a year later to play under Harry Redknapp. Well, I've always had a good reception here, yeah, even when I come back with Liverpool. Um, in the end of the game, we beat them too well, still got a great reception, so uh, it is nice. How were things at Liverpool towards the end? Because it must have been very frustrating knowing a player of your talents who actually isn't getting first-team football. 
yeah, it was frustrating, but at the end of the day, the manager picks a side and he, he didn't uh, fancy me in his side. So at the end of the day, I've got to look, uh, look at other clubs and thankfully West Ham have got me. This was an older and wiser Dix who continually received plaudits for his performances under Redknapp and, it was once said, was told to grow his hair if he was serious about getting the England call-up all football writers agreed he was worthy of. But it never came. Still, from the day Lou Macari made him captain in September 1989, he took responsibility with a maturity far beyond his 21 years. He started to take penalties for West Ham, scoring the winning goal from the spot in his first ever game as Hammers captain. This was the season after top club spot kicker Ray Stewart had left. By the time Dix was forced to hang up his boots, nearly 10 years later, he had put away 35 penalties. Here are just a few of those 35 spot kicks. Robson, they're breaking in numbers now. Bishop screaming for it. This one's through for Keane. He's taken it past his man. Is it going to be a penalty? Yes, it is. It is a penalty. A brilliant run from Kevin Keane. Superb play from the West Ham number 11. In 65 minutes, Julian Dix. It's there. It's two. This one for Morley to chase. Can he hold up his man? Is that a penalty? It is. And I don't think there was any doubt whatsoever. Steve Vickers, he held Morley down, there's no doubt about it at all. He's done it, no doubt at all. Julian Dix. And it's his third goal in three home games. Jenny Brown, it's a lovely header looking for Morley, but... Uh, Mungo gets it back. What can Nixon do? He's taking him down. It's another penalty. Unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable stuff. And it's Morley again. In it goes. Number two, Julian Dix. Good work from Rush. Finds Bishop. Lovely flip. Through. Here goes Moncur. He's brought down and it's a penalty. Leicester's man brought him down. But he can't have too many arguments about that. Moncur had the beating of him. An excellent move from West Ham. The flick through from Morley. Reached Moncur. And he'd always beaten Moen. No question at all. Real opportunity for West Ham. Been a close fought contest. Moncur and that step forward folk hero, Julian Dix. Key penalty. Giving himself enough of a run up. Right through. Julian Dix. Nothing and no one was going to stop that. Beautifully hit. West Ham one, less than nil. Loose ball from Smith. He's given that one away. Cotty. Is he going for goal number 101? He's come down. And it's going to be a penalty. And uh, Lester, not happy about it. Grayson isn't, but he's already given one away. Now he's given a second. If Dix can put this penalty away, excellent run from Cotty. Felled at the last gasp effort, and it falls to Julian Dix to hit his second penalty of the season. He does. Well, if ever you need to see how to take a penalty, this is the way. Dix, well, if that net was made of paper, it would have gone straight through. Well, referee. Ellery pointed to the spot straight away, no hesitation. 
And it really just a missed time. Zach <laughs> dear, oh dear. Talk about high kicks. Uh, Julian Dix. An opportunity to uh, open his account, which he does. We've seen plenty of penalties in the summer in England. And one wonders what would have happened if it had been Julian Dix taking the 6-1 for England at Wembley that night against Germany. Well, he missed one against Arsenal last year, but he was concussed. He, certainly no problem with this one. Bishop. Much more of a playmaker this half. That's a long speculative ball, which uh, Lazaridis may get on the end of. Looked like he was pulled over. Yes! Penalty, says David Ellery. Well, it was a good ball from Ian Bishop. Lazaridis got into a good position. And, well... Alfie Harland, who's really had an absolute nightmare tonight. It's about the first thing he's done the game. Here he goes. It's four. Who knows how this one is going to finish? Kitson's header on is a good one. Hartson battling away for the ball. Carl's played it back into his own area. said some five minutes ago that Mr Willard went long and hard about the other penalty didn't get it on this occasion same player again involved Howells on this occasion he gives the penalty and on this occasion I'm not totally sure it was I thought he'd won the ball cleanly but uh, maybe West Ham will decide that justice has been done and Julian Dix rarely misses he won't hit it softly that's the only thing you can be sure of That's a superb ball to Porfirio if he can cut through. He's taken it past him, Larry's gone down. And what's the referee going to do? Julian Dix's career was blighted by injury and he suffered two lengthy periods away from football, the first of 14 months from October 1990 to December 1991 and the second of 18 months from April 1997 to September 1998. Both layoffs due to knee injuries and operations that had failed to correct damage caused by years of playing on with a serious injury that these days would have been operated on a lot sooner than this one was. Dix retired from the game prematurely to pursue his second sporting love, golf. And these days, runs his own pub, which is as popular as he was in his days at West Ham. In fact, recently, when Harry Redknapp was asked to put together his greatest Hammers team of all time, he conceded that Dix would just get the number three shirt over Frank Lampard Sr. for the true natural ability that he had and always demonstrated at the club whenever he put on a West Ham United shirt. Could be Allen, but a uh, half-hearted effort, really. Back was blocked. Keen won that back supremely. Great play from the West Ham number 11. Dix, what a goal! What a goal, Julian Dix! One of the best strikes you will ever see. Pick that one out. 
Dick's nice free kick. Dick's again. He's done it again! He has done it again! Julian Dick's with another amazing strike. The ball laid across to him and he hit it so cleanly. It's hard man image, but I just go out and give 110%. Um, that's the way I am, that's where I'll always be. Um, I got a few decisions against referees, um, like sending off at Wolves, which shouldn't have been. Um, a few bookings, which shouldn't have been, but that's, that's what it is, I've got to accept that. He's hit it far post. It's a great one, and it's a fantastic goal. And, well, are you surprised? It's that man, Dix. Keen again. It's another one and a brilliant header off the line. Here comes Dix again. Off the line and again it's out. Julian Dix wasn't going to miss it and he's got two. And what do you know? We're only just 11 minutes into the game and Julian Dix has, uh, well, he wasn't going to miss that, was he? He was denied there with the, we had the clearance off the line. The ball came out to him again. Again it was clomped out, but uh, with the aid of the post, in he went for goal number two. 11 minutes gone, and it's Julian Dix 2, Grimsby Town nil. Nice back flick from Donny to Hughes. Donny on for him. Plays a square ball. This is Julian Dix. Oh, what a goal from Dix! A real screamer! And he's hit that sweetly from 25 yards. Straight into the top of the city net. Excellent build-up and uh, the ball that looked pretty wide from Hughes. But Dix had other ideas. What a finish. Proud player, proud captain, Julian Dix. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And, 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 and actually, it, not just wow, because it was a, a great, great bit of video editing, Mr. Godleman, but he's got, he's come back. He's managed to get in all the way from Croydon, all the way from Croydon. I knew it. I knew he would. To his shed, the pool of Judy and Dixon talking to you, Martin, for the next 13 hours is, is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to him, not talking to him. <laughs> I just want. I, I just gonna put something up because Anton sent me something. That interview you did with Julian when he's just signed back, and he had that sort of horrible. He had that sort of denim shirt on and the horrible sort of grey cardigan. Um, actually, and there's a, there's a. I've got a picture of young Anton here somewhere. Where is it? That it's young. Look, he's in the back of his. That's the same picture. That's the same picture. And he's in. And Anton's in the back with the little hat. Um, that was him. That, look at the Anton. Oh, look at the Anton and Julian. It was six there. <laughs> look at the size of him. No, he's got a denim shirt on with a button-down yeah. denim shirt. I know. I know. Look at look at. He's the same height. Look, he's the same height as the, Anton's. The same height as a linesman almost. Jesus Christ! How tall is he? But anyway, anyway, I just thought I'd show you show you those as well. Oh, bless Nigel. Yeah, how are you? There. John Barnes going on there. This Liverpool. Yeah. Yep. Um, West Ham connection. Incidentally, that question I asked before that, that the, you may, Nigel, have not picked up, which was against which side 
Nigel will know the answer to this. Against which which football side did Julian Dix make his debut at Upton Park? His first game for West Ham oh against Upton. His first game for West Ham was against Sheffield Wednesday. Correct. Um, uh, listen to the question again. The clue. Yeah. In the question against which team did uh, Julian Dix make his first appearance at Upton Park? Did Did he play against West Ham? Against West yes, Ham. I knew you'd get yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He did for who? Oh. For Birmingham City. Birmingham, yeah, must be. So I don't know if you see. This is. Is that is that a representation of Anton it's, and Julian Dix again? This is uh, Tim Raker. This is Corinthians circa 1995. Obviously, I think they've improved since then. <laughs> They're on drugs. But, That's that is Tim Breaker. They but, have the wrong guy model for it. But well, I had to double Breaker. check because even I looked. I, I had them all lined up, <laughs> and it does say Dix. <laughs> So, so the Steve Potts one's worse, believe me. Oh, God. Is well, the I'm, head I'm, bigger than the body? Because that is Steve Potts. At well, least Steve, that like. Steve Potts might be actually life size, but um, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Why is Steve Potts coming in for all the abuse? The guy know. who's still working for West Ham saw him at the under 23s game recently. Yeah, he was there. Looking, uh, industrious and getting stuck in and determined and all that and the entire Potts family are in every single league in in football at the moment aren't they represent first like that, yeah that's, that's, that's the Bobby Moore um I mean, come on guys this is in the right it's a bit right. better isn't it it's, it's a bit it's, better it looks a bit like joe like, worrell what's the name fit of Paulie, the, the uh, formula one driver it's <laughs> not bobby moore for god who was more, the bro was on acid or something wasn't he when he did well oh, yeah. bobby moore out. So, i know I, I've, 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 yeah. who he is. I've, got, I've got why is I've, he going to be talking like that though yeah, I've got a few different Bobby Moores, I must admit. I've got Bobby Moore in red for England, Bobby Moore in white for England, and Bobby Moore in uh, West Ham. We're look, looking, Nigel, at the, at, the, at, the, um, at the Bible of West Ham, of course. Yeah. And I want you Ooh. to tell me, before Can we I, get on to Julian Dick, yeah. who else have we, because we were doing the Ds, all the great Ds who played West yeah. Ham. Now we're going to look at all the Ms. We're going to say Bobby Moore obviously covered yeah. the first... Um, two pages. Do we have any other great M's? Which how many can you find? McClosco. Yeah, McClosco. The first one, Macari. <laughs> I think that's the joke page. Whoa! I don't diss the Lou. I tell ya, um, Martin. He weren't bad. Obviously, McAvenny. Yeah, Alvin yeah, Martin. Alvin. All the greats. Malky Mackay. Oh, yeah, all the greats. Yeah, Malky <laughs> Mackay. Yeah. McClosco more. Trev, Trev McKellen. Uh, and, and one Morley. thing I'll pick you up on, your, your stat about 64 goals. Is that wrong? I think you've missed one. <laughs> oh, what was the one I missed? Martin, the Anglo-Italian he, Cup against Bristol Rovers or something. He he did, yeah. Did you have the full Members' Cup goal? No, I don't think we were allowed to use it. Because one of them, one of those was against Millwall, so they, they, people didn't no, want... He, I know yeah, there's one. He, he got one goal one. in the full Members' Cup. Uh... All right, I, 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 so 87, which is quite so, nice. It, yeah, it was late like 80s, but uh, yes, I think... The 87, is that, isn't that the Australian unlucky number that they always lose 20 wickets on when then 87 comes up? And what's that's got to do with anything? Why is Macari, incidentally, if you're watching that extract closely and as yeah. you were running up the street from getting onto that East Croydon train, um, why is Macari a, a really important um, person in the Julian Dix story? Ah, because it was little Lou that made uh, Julian captain. It was indeed. There we are. You probably weren't even near where that was said, so that's doubly, double points there. <laughs> double points. Can you see, by the way, we're still beating Leon. Oh, no, we beat him 2 0. <laughs> this, this, I don't know, you didn't hear that, um, Nigel. We've got, I've got one of these future TVs that shows you games two weeks in the future. But oh. I can't. I've tried to work out what the first leg was, but we're winning two 0 at Leon, so oh. we must have won the first leg. Do you reckon? I think we lost that five 0 Oh God! <laughs> so we still got three goals to make up. Oh I mean, dear! Oh, it's fifty-three minutes. So thir thirty-seven still time. minutes. Still Give him time. time. Still time. Still time. You still must know. have the one. The, the one that shows games a week in the future. 
That's Probably, not. yeah. They are. You must have thought we had no chance in this second leg. We're still in with a, still in with a little snip. We're still there. in there. We're still in there. Sure. How many players? How many West Ham players do you know? He's right about me talking all the way through this. How many West Ham players do you know who, who actually saw the side go down three times? And don't forget also in his first season for Birmingham, they went down. So this is a guy who's experienced four really. Count that again, because I'm right. Four relegations from the top league, and yet continued to uh, have the power he did. Two promotions, both under Billy Bonds. Well, only I mean I think Alvin can top him because I think Alvin had four relegations. We don't include Orient though, do we? No, awesome. Alvin got relegated in 77, 78. He got relegated in 88, 89. He got relegated in 1991, and he got relegated in 92 as well. 92, right, not 91, 92. Yeah, 92. No, so 92. 8, so... 92. 91, 92. 91, 92 87, um, 77, 78, and what was the other one? Oh, it was three then. Yeah, mm, three. Yeah. Yeah. So Dixie has one more relegation season, even than the great Alvin Martin. <laughs> also <laughs> another captain of West Ham. Yeah. Where do you get these fabulous facts from? You West Ham fans out there aged 12 and 13. I hope you're writing all this down. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do these shows, Martin, to keep to keep it for prosperity, don't we? So, Nigel, your yeah. first the first time that Julian Dix tickled your focus for football. Um, I, I, I I think he was a... I mean, people won't realise that he was a deadline signing because the... the, the transfer window used to shut the last day of March. Uh, well, funny enough, today. So years ago... <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> you look at oh that. Today would have been the final... Uh, would have been the last day to make a transfer before the last, you know, four to six weeks of the season. Mm. So Dixie came in. I mean, we were struggling um, to stay up. We weren't having a good time. Um... When he joined, I don't think we did that well. In fact, I don't think he won his first game till we beat Chelsea in a famous game, 4-1. Uh, Leroy joined at the same time, Rosignor. Correct. Um, yeah. I think Leroy joined just before Julian. Julian came in after. Um, his third game. When Dix made his debut, it was Rosignor's third game. Yes. So, and then um, we beat Chelsea, which put Chelsea in the playoffs. So that year, and this is the thing people won't realise, what happened is the bottom three went down, mm. fall from bottom, went into the playoffs from the champion. So it, what would have been Division good. 2. And mm. then I, I, I don't, this may have been the first year of the playoffs. So what happened is, is that they played off, I believe, against Middlesbrough and got beat. So, so four teams went down from Division One that season. Uh, and if we'd have lost to Chelsea um, in that four-one game, I think Leroy got two. Um, I can't remember who the other scores. I'm pretty sure Leroy got two. Um, so we could have gone down in eighty-seven, eighty-eight. Well, yeah. So um, Fine. yes, well, I'm sure if, you're right. If I'm you sure look, at, right. if you he find says. the eighty-seven, eighty-eight. I'm looking. If we'd have I'm lost looking. that game against Chelsea, we Ooh. would have replaced Chelsea in the full from bottom well, team. Yeah, 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 yeah. The you are, as always, correct. We yeah. actually finished the season with the same number of points as against Chelsea, Chelsea yeah. but uh, stayed up along with Charlton or stayed out of the playoffs along with Charlton as a result yeah. of a better goal difference. What a shame that Chelsea went went down through the probably once only played the fourth from bottom yeah, I, I with don't, a bad I, goal difference. That's yeah. so vicious. I mean, it was a trial to reduce. They wanted to, and it's weird now because obviously we had 22 teams back then. So they mm. wanted to reduce it down. Um, I, I, I think it was one, one team at a time or it might have been down to 20. So this is what they wanted. They wanted 20. I think it only happened for one or two seasons before they upped it again to 22 teams in the top division. Um, so Chelsea, I believe, were the first team to be the fourth team relegated. I don't know how many came up. I don't know if Martin, if it tells you how many came up. 
Um, it will yeah. say, well, it will, it's going to have been 4-4, four, four, obviously, isn't it? If you think no, because I think they were trying no, to reduce, trying to reduce it, They yeah. were trying to do, reduce All the right, league. so only two came up. And that's why. And, and it was, it was a, a short league thing with the playoffs. 20, yeah. In the end. 88-89, yeah. it went down from 22 to 20. But yeah. there's something else delicious about that Chelsea game. You were quite right. Russell, you scored twice. Yeah. Uh, Paul Hilton scored a rare goal. Oh. But scoring one minute from the end with a goal that probably kept us out of that playoff, his last goal for West Ham was Tony Cotty before he went to Everton. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that Woods. I yeah. mean, it was near enough. It wasn't the last game of the season. I think it was the second no. the last game of the yeah, season. Yeah, we lost to Newcastle last game. Yeah, I was, which I was at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I believe no. if you look, Stuart Robson scored for West Ham to put us 1-0 up. Yes, that's correct. I can tell you a funny that. story about that. Is is that a gas going come to take the corner. And a, a West Ham fan had a fun-sized pack of mini Mars bars. And he'd give them out to West Ham fans and said, when Gascoigne comes and takes a corner, we pelt him with mini Mars bars, which we did. And Gascoigne picked one up, opened it, ate it, went cheers, Cockneys, and took the corner. <laughs> cheers, Cockneys. Guess who scored the winner for Newcastle that day? Come on, Nigel. This is a tough one. Do you know one. what? I, I know Paul Goddard was playing for Newcastle that day. Who um, was? Yeah. I don't know if uh, Beardsley might have been his last season at Newcastle as well before leaving to go to uh, Liverpool. Um, to Gascoigne. Glenn New Roder? Goal. That day. It was actually an own goal by oh. Julian Dix. Oh, was it? Oh, dear. Mm. Fusion. Unbelievable. The fusion of this. Yeah. It's like we've kind of rehearsed all this before. <laughs> yeah, wish we fucking ate it. Literally, I did keep running. <laughs> he rehearsed that train from East. Drank the cup of tea, and then, that's it. And, and caught half the video. Brilliant. Uh, sorry, I thought Leon had just scored then, because that really would it would be all over. It would be all over, definitely. It would but, be. Um, we still need three goals. Yeah. God. I wish you hadn't told me that. There I was thinking we are just waltzing through to the semi-finals oh. against Eintracht Frankfurt. We already know they won at the new Camp. Can you believe what are the chances of that? So we're going to Eintracht Frankfurt again. Who are going to look for, who are going to want revenge? Well, there's a funny story about Eintracht Frankfurt. In the earlier this year, um, I was uh, put in touch with the curator of the Eintracht Frankfurt Museum. And I sent him. Not, some... not a member of the ultras that were the. No, no. Uh, this is the. He's quite famous in Germany. Uh, apparently, the Eintracht Frankfurt have got a proper museum, and basically they wanted to name a part of their stadium West Ham United in honour of the 1976 European Cup Winners' Cup semi-final. And he did put in his email, "Yes, we're still upset." <laughs> oh no and now when we play them in the semi-final I know like, you imagine that so uh, it, it, so oh, no um, they're going to be so up for it aren't they well and uh, the, the funny thing is it, it, there was there is an open invitation from uh, said man that if I'm ever in Germany because I do like to go I have been to Germany to watch football um, that to come by the Eintracht Frankfurt Museum it'll give guys, you guys promise me promise me when <laughs> Not if yeah. when we play when we're disappointed because we don't go to the new camp. Of course, there'll be that disappointment. Not but when we go to Eintracht Frankfurt, you are coming, right? Absolutely. Well, I, yeah, I would. I would like to. I'll be doing... back because they've promised to show me. I don't know if it was like a corporate box, but there's Open a part invitation. of the Eintracht Frankfurt Stadium called Listen, West Ham right to, right to them yeah. now before <laughs> they they go back on their word because they realise now they got some some other dignitary they want to go. You go, oh, by the way, that's just in the unlikely event that we meet in the semi-final. You do remember <laughs> yeah. what you said. Yeah. Can you sign this Perhaps document? I'll contact them after the first leg, though. No, yeah. just, I don't, <laughs> don't, don't want to go too early. No, because after the first leg, we'd have beat them 4-0. They're not going to want no. you anywhere near. Uh, 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 after after, the, Leon after the Leon first yes, leg. Oh, I, beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. It's not oh, cow yes, chickens. That's true. No, yeah. you're quite right. After we've been beaten five 0 they go, yeah. Oh, yeah, no come on, on. You can do anything you like. Come <laughs> anytime. We'll get you a three course meal. I have to say, it's still two 0 so we, we may not be going to Eintracht Frankfurt. But they've already. I mean, I'm getting updates here. 
it does look like they're already in the semi-final. So if we can recover those last three goals, it'll be happening. Okay, Martin. <laughs> this is Julian Dick's night. Sorry. Exactly. Julian. This is shocking. Um, but I, I am, you are going to, uh, uh, I am going to put, put your way, um, great mate, that this fabulous interview with Julian Dix back from 2006 in his Spanish heyday when he was uh, playing off scratch and all that other stuff um, uh, for you to put out on your wonderful channel, uh, okay. Russ. So that will be over. It's actually an hour and three quarters, so you might need to chop it up. No, hour. put it all up. People like but the it. whole thing. Anyway, do not get, leave West Ham Network because you'll miss when that is going to be broadcast. Oh, Russ will put it out yep. the first moment he gets. And it kind of it will dovetail sweetly on the back of this. So uh, the, the question I'm going to ask you, Nigel, if I can, because it's absolutely your ear of this, is um, what was the difference between the Julian Dix who played under Billy Bonds and the Julian Dix who played under Harry Redknapp? Now, I'm not talking about the state of his knee, which clearly was a difference, but what was the difference in him as a player? When he came back, he'd only had a year at Liverpool. Mm. Well, how was he different, would you say? I don't Possibly, I know it's things like temperamentality. Um, whether it aged <laughs> with, mm. with a bit of experience, whether being at Liverpool um, and, and playing there at such a big club made him uh, the, the discipline wise. Um, I think he got sent off less um, when he came back in the second period. I think you know than than he than he did in the first period. Yeah. So I, I think if anything changed, I don't. I'm not sure the aggression changed. I think he just channeled it in a better way, and he didn't get mixed up in petty little tit for tat off the ball stuff that that sometimes he got away with, and sometimes he didn't. Um, I, people I've, said he. People said he was only. He was very much a left sided player, but when he elbowed Frank Carl, that was his right elbow. Did you notice? So he uh, could elbow with both yeah. both elbows. And did you see the goal against Grimsby? Well, see, that was before Franz Carr came and had a trial with us. Um. <laughs> yeah, he just asked, didn't he, when he came for the trial, is Dixie yeah, here? Dixie. Is, he, is he still no, here? I'll come, I'll come there. Uh, of course, um, another great stat for Julian, while we're here, is he was the last player to score in front of the standing cop. Yep. Was anyone there? Was it behind closed it doors? Was full, no, it was fully sold out. He scored a penalty for Liverpool. Mm. I think it was wow. in a one-all draw, um, yeah. and yeah. So it, that's, I mean, I mean, that's a great <laughs> one year at Liverpool, and, and he gets that. to be the player to score yeah. the last goal in front of the standing cup. You know, that mm. will go down in Liverpool history, really, wouldn't it? And there so, are a lot of Liverpool fans who speak, who I've spoken to, who speak very fondly of him playing for the side. Although Soonest didn't have the, the the success of clearly of previous Liverpool managers, he, mm. he had a a very different approach to how we wanted Liverpool to be. Uh, they never needed to be quite so physical before, he says, thinking of players like Tommy Smith and that. But um, under Dix and under uh, uh, Souness, it was a it was a very different. And then was it Roy Evans who took over? Who th didn't take a little didn't take him, did he? No, yeah. Didn't take so Souness had his elf. I think he had his elf trouble as well, didn't he? While he was at Liverpool, he had to have his art bypass. Mm. And then I wonder if he hadn't had that, if we'd. If we'd have ever got Julian back, I don't. I mean, yeah, it's a good question. It, it's mm. the, the, I mean, the, the 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 crux of it as well is is that um, if you look at the deal to get move Julian on, as disappointing as it was to lose Julian, to then be able to bring in Burrows and Marsh, Marsh yeah, and Two I think players. with the money, and I think with the money, Lee Chapman, mm. and, and Lee, you know, Lee weren't loved. But that first season, it was all about clinging into the Premier League. Because mm. we what had Yo-Yo. What, Yo did, they, what the, did Liverpool pay for Dix? It was something that's Two and a half. Yeah, it I was mean, two and a half. In the day, what would that be these days? No, well, we only got two for Cotty. And I know it was three, four years after Cotty. So, um, I, I but think... Yeah, we bought, as three, you say, we, we, we actually bought the players who kept us up. Yes, I, I think without without that happening, mm. it, it's possible that we may have have, have struggled again um, to keep our position. Of course, that would have been the season of 
Um, no, it was the next season, Joey Beecham, wasn't it? Yes, yes. with Monks and, and stuff. Yeah, and that's yeah. when he left. So, because obviously Bill was the manager, but the architect of the move was Harry Redknapp. And and and, and for me, it's quite possible that the, the fact that Harry was the architect of, of that deal, whether that put in the, the, the director's minds that actually is Harry the better manager than Bill. But actually... Bonds, from what on the occasions I've seen him talk and actually spoken to him, but I think Bonds found that Dixie was a handful, and and he wasn't he wasn't going to stop. He may have gone. It could have been one of those murder in the cathedral moments when he said, "Will no one rid me of this awful left back?" And Harry Redknapp went, "What? What?" And he went off and um, did it worked his magic. Yeah, so that the, uh. the Redknapp Bonds thing. Could have a lot to do with Julian Dix, just kind of throwing in a bit of a well. I mean, the, the, the thing about Bonds and Dix is that the uh, obviously the, the weird thing is is that Bill was player of the year the season, I believe, Dixie joined us. So in 88, I think Billy Bonds was player of the season, and um, Dix did play. I think once or twice with with Bill, but he would have been around the club. The Wednesday and game, would yeah. would have would have seen him and uh, um and like been part of that team. And obviously, he was a man. Billy Bonds would have been 40, 41, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and here's Dix, who was 18, 19 when he joined us. Yeah. So something like that. Yeah. It's two careers. You know, meeting. Let's look at, should we, for can that we look at that brief period? Can we look at that team? This is the team that Dix first played for West Ham in uh, the away defeat at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, McAllister, remember him? Yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, yeah. Stewart. Yeah. The, the, he kind of replaced Stewart as the penalty taker. This is where the replacement starts. Dix, Bonds, yeah. Strodder, Gary, Gary Strodder, Strodder. Yeah. Uh, Tony Gale, Ward. Paris, Rossigny in his third game, Cotty in one of his very last games, Robson, who'd been Hammer of the Year, hadn't he? Or was he Hammer of the Year that year? I, I, I thought Robson was Hammer of the Year in uh, 1990. He was out for a year. He came back. So, 89, 90, I think, was uh, Stuart Robson Amory. Yeah, years. this weird thought that Stuart Robson only actually played one season for us, but obviously I'm wrong on that. No, he joined us. Um, was Did he join us in 87? Uh, eight, it was around I the think... same time that Liam's joined us. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, and yeah. then he, got, he had a bad injury where he was out. So, I think for um, the 80, the relegation season, I think he missed most of it. He came back against Derby County in a League Cup game in January 1990. And I'll never forget right. it because I only made it to Rovers Thorpe Services before I gave up because the traffic was absolutely <laughs> horrendous. Did you start from it. East Croydon? Oh, no, we, we started from Plasto. <laughs> <laughs> right. But we only it's made it as far as Rovers Thorpe Services. Right. And it was about quarter past seven. And it was me and my mate were like, we ain't in the... It was just tail lights all the way up the M1 still. And it was like, ah. Oh, Imagine it. having to give up a game that you're driving to. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, we weren't going to, we'd already been in, on the road for two and a half hours. It was like, we ain't getting Imagine there. how much that petrol would cost if that journey was made today. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I was in the company car. Two good defenders, couldn't you? For a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that 88-89 relegation season I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm just going to put a few things to you and then to take us through what you think that might have meant to somebody like Julian Dix, right? A very a youngster playing in that side. Mm. This, is the, this is the season that saw the end of, in inverted commas, a, a Paul Ince and Tony Cotty in very different uh, uh, situations. We were relegated by two points. The, in, the last, in the last few matches, they kind of clicked that, uh, yeah. No disrespect, but Mr. McKnight might have had something to do with our form. And he was dropped and 38-year-old Phil Parks came for the last few games. And the last game, bearing in mind we only got relegated by two points. I know we the, get, last, yeah, yeah. the last game, what happened in the last game? And it, and it didn't really matter so, in the end. So we we'll tell you. To... All right. So we lost to Liverpool away at Anfield. 
and we lost 5-1. And I'll tell you why this is special. And I'll tell you why the one goal is special. Yeah, the goal <laughs> scored goal. by Leroy Rosignor is so special. Liverpool had two games left. They had to play West Ham and then they had to and play then. Arsenal. A game that everyone will remember. And what happened is Leroy Rosignor's goal meant Arsenal only needed two goals to win the title at Anfield instead of winning by three clear goals if Leroy had not scored that goal. But, and I mean, fact, you're, you're, kind of, you're kind of making it sound like an also ran, but we were one well, all in that game for quite Oh, yeah, yeah, time. yeah. yeah. It we was, were, it, that's one of those five ones that really isn't a five one. It, it, they it, just it, ran a muck in yeah, the game. It, it went away from us in the second half. It, it looked on... Um, it this was, is that Liverpool, by the way, where we hadn't won yeah. even then for you. But the, the weird thing about that, it didn't effing matter. Liverpool would still have finished if they'd let us win that and then capitulated against Arsenal. Wouldn't have made any difference then. They would have still finished second, but we would have stayed up. Yeah, but I think they were expecting to beat Arsenal, to be fair to them. Uh, but, I mean, the, the weird thing about that is, I think, is if you, you've, got, you've probably got the, the games there, um, I think we won something like four of our last six games. Typical West Ham end of the it was like, yeah. I, the there was one game in the March where I walked out and thought, we're Dan, and we were 1-0 up to Middlesbrough, and Bernie Slaven scored two goals, and we lost 2-1. And I... I, I I walked out really early, and I tell you, it would have been relegated. Great, it was Aston question, Villa. The way, from Mark it was Brown. Aston Villa. <laughs> so, I think Aston Villa. We're going to check that. Have a look. Uh, go and check it. <laughs> go and uh, check it. Right. We don't want to get it wrong on this game. Uh, we aren't going to. Those of you who are hanging on, thinking this is a program about Julian Dix, you haven't tuned in wrong. Um, Aston Villa, yeah, Aston Villa. Well done, Nige. A point, and and Luton were. Were uh, just a point above that. I mean, it was yeah. so tight in the bottom, just four points yeah. separated 16. And I still look at and, and I actually still think, I know it was March and there was probably about seven, eight games left, but to lose 2 1 at home to Middlesbrough, who'd only been promoted that season, mm. and who I think came down with us. And Newcastle, was it? I think Newcastle went. Did Newcastle go down with us, Mark? You got the league table there. I, I think it was Newcastle, did, uh, Middlesbrough, and us. And Middlesbrough, not a great t- time for the North East. But tell me something about that. We think about that, how close we were to relegation, yeah. where our worst ever relegation is the one under Avram Grant. I think yes, definitely. Of course. Yeah. But of course. Can you find me something similar about the West Ham team that went down under Avram Grant and the West Ham team that went down under John Lyle in 89. Something similar about their se- both those teams' seasons. Yeah, we 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 um, we got the League Cup semi final, and we got to the FA Cup. Uh, we got to the FA Cup quarter final. We did. We had yeah. two superb runs in the cup. Yeah. Avram Grant season is most memorable for us having more cup victories than league victories. Yeah. That, that will never happen again. A- Avram, Avram Grant has got the worst record of any West Ham manager in top flight. But he's also got one of the best cup records. Of, Absolutely of any true. West Ham manager. It's like Sam Allardyce's record as England manager. Never yeah. conceded a goal. Won every single game he managed. He it's did. fantastic. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll throw you something else you might not know, Mark, that links 77-78 to 88-89. Um, uh, Newcastle also got relegated with us in 77-78. times. But we didn't beat them 8-1 in 87-88. No. No, but I, 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 strangely enough, I think we also got promoted once with Newcastle. I believe we in 91, yeah. 92. 92, 93, weren't it? Yeah, we, not, yeah. And we also brought the Kevin Keegan era to an end, didn't we, by beating them 2 0 at Upton Park? Yes. So, uh, so great things. It, it was. But, um, go on. I mean, going back to Julian. Um, it, I don't know. It, I don't know if he, if I thought of him as the natural successor as a captain to. I, I think it was Alvin, wasn't it? Um, yeah. That they called time on. The thing is, I think at the time, I think there was rumours that Alvin was possibly looking out of the club or was well, refusing to sign a new contract. A, who else would have been a captain that um, Macari might have been looking at for that? For that team? Uh, I mean, I suppose mm. Tony Gal. Yeah, would have been the other one for yeah, me. Greatest captain we never had. I, yeah. I would, 
I'd be happy to say that because he was well, a he was respected. He had a great sense of humour yeah. as well. Yeah, I think he'd I'd, have been a good good captain. The funny thing about it is, is that I think Lou speaks quite highly of um, Alvin. Um, I'm not sure what he thinks about Tony Gow. What does he think about Julian Dix? He obviously thought... No, he, he thought Julian was fantastic. The Scottish yeah. love Julian Dix. Graham yeah. Sinis, Lou Macari, think about They all love him. Uh, yeah, because are. I think he, he the, one, the one thing about Julian is was he was a true professional. And he may have done it in his own way, but yeah. his, his outlook and, he, and his dedication to whatever shirt he was pulling on was second to none. Mm. And, he's, he's, you know, he just wanted to go out there and play football. Yeah. You know, he might not have been the best trainer. Mm. He might have had the weirdest pre-match warm-up routine yeah. in the world ever. And uh, in his pre-match meal of Mars bars and Coke. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? I've, I've, um, I'm trying to find it on the, on the interview. Yeah, so, yeah, pro- yeah. Probably leave a lot to be desire, desired. But, I mean, one of the best hours I ever sat was at, um, an ex function. Um, and Julian was there. And he'd been out of the game for a while, and it, his 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 knowledge of football um, and the way it should be played and the way it should be coached was second to none. And I, I feel football sort of shortchanged him. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I know he he got the gig at, you know, he managed West Ham women for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 and if you look in non league, he did well with non league at a lot of the clubs. Right. When he was at Grays, he did brilliant. He took over a Haybridge Swift side that was bottom of the table in December and they won the playoffs. And I, and, and I was going over Averley at the same season and I was looking forward to the Averley Haybridge Swifts game because Averley was managed, I think, by Keith Rowland. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. at the time. So and it was weird because uh, it, it was Avery that got knocked out of the playoffs by Avery Swifts, and and they and and he, he won the promotion. Well, he didn't get promotion because of some weird technicality about the club or something. But they won the playoffs, uh, but they couldn't get promotion. Um, and you think it took that team from the bottom? So something was there, and I, you know, it was always a shame that when. Slaven left that it meant Julian went as well. Mm-hmm. Well, but then, but then they both went, they rejoined in their West Brom. West Brom. West Brom. I, there are two or three uh, happy memories I have of uh, of Dixie, uh, and they're, they're also a bit strange because Di- Dixie, he was a complete one off mold breaker. Unfortunately, they broke a bit of his knee when they broke the mold. That was the sickening thing. Yeah. But um, uh, memories of, of doing, a, doing a DVD with Tony Cotty. And there was this key moment in the interview. I thought I've got to talk to him because he he was the in and the out, the in a little bit with with uh, Dixie, and then played with him in that second um, in his second stint at the, in the Premier League. And I said, "What do you reckon, um, Tom? What do you reckon about uh, Dixie? Do you think he was our greatest left back? You know?" And this this was Tony Cotty. He went, well, "It's just Dixie, isn't it?" It's just Dixie. It's all you can say. I thought, I suppose he's put it there, and it really you can't you can't use other players to compare. It. Who was the guy? Was it Mark Dennis? Who was the player he sort of molded himself? And I'm trying to think of. The- yeah, so Mark Dennis um, was the uh, was I believe the left back at Birmingham City as well. I mean, his time at Birmingham oh, City or what? Yeah, I mean, Mark Dennis was probably one of the hardest footballers at the time in the 80s he, he was uh, apparently he, he should have played for England but he, he had a terrible terrible reputation he was, a, he was a 70s player playing in the 80s yeah it was never gonna work. at the time Birmingham City I think Ron Saunders would have been the manager of course um took Villa to the title and then moved I, Cross City to yeah, Birmingham I, City wow. gave me his chance but they had I think Pat Van and Hour who, who, who was another nutcase um another yes Millwall uh, yeah, um, I, I think uh, I don't know if uh, Howard uh, Gow was there as well. I think this Liverpool. is really important. This, this chat is which is where Dixie came from. He came from hard man land, yeah. yes. And do, do we have a hard man land now? Not really, harder, 
harder. We've we've got more divers than we had. Uh, ironically, you should have had more divers when there were hard men. But but Dick's definitely came from an era where this was something to aspire to. Mm. This something you know that you. I mean, you see some of those tackles in that Birmingham game, and what was he sixteen okay, yeah. or something or seventeen? Just seventeen if he was seventeen. Um, and this we we beat him two 0 that night, and and that to be good. This was of course when the cameras weren't there, and it was we wouldn't even have the pictures if if uh, Steve Katz hadn't gone there to film that. Um, uh, with I think they were called freeze frame then, but they they did a lot of those games. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them from eighty five eighty six. And you can see the young Julian Dix going down the the, the up and down the touchline. You know, putting people and uh, toffee wrappers into the chicken run. Um, I mean, was he a West Ham? And this is the the, the, the funny thing is because uh, you know we, a lot of us get misty eyed. Oh, the West Ham way and the, yeah. the cultured way of playing football. Yet when you look at some of the greatest players of the modern, or what I, when I say modern, I mean from my era. So yeah, I know right. I go back to 40 odd <laughs> years. The modern, modern, you know, modern <laughs> like, can go back to the 70s. But if you look at the likes of Billy Bonds, George Paris, and then Julian, you know, th these were not cultured players. But, the, you, know, the, the, you know, these people w were players that, they were needed because they allowed the cultured players the space to mm. play the game because they did the dirty work. And all the best teams. And I was listening to an interview with Tony Carr recently where he said about our under Ron Greenwood. And um, Ron really didn't like those type of players. The story I got told um, by my uncle that, you know, John Cushley's first game for West Ham, he smashed the life out of everyone. And Bobby Moore was really happy. And when he got into the dressing room, Ron Greenwood said, uh, calm it down, John, we don't play like that here. Mm. And apparently it was John Lyle, who, when he took over from Ron Greenwood. Put more steel into the yeah, side. You know, one of his first signings was Keith Robson. You know, someone that would put it about. Mm. The type of player that Ron Greenwood um, would, would try and avoid in a way. And if you look back then, um, uh, uh, John Lowell. John would sign these types of players. And he did sign Dix and never really yes. saw him play for him, really. Not properly. That, well, he, that, yeah, he got one year out of him. That was like his legacy to West Ham, wasn't yeah. it? This, this young kid who he'd signed, who he believed in, obviously, because he went out uh, uh, and and Julian, as you'll see when you see um, uh, the programme on, on uh, Russ's uh, channel, uh, you'll see he talks very fondly he does yeah wow. yeah he does very fondly mm. and remembers when they came round to talk to him and and also can you think of anyone in the history of football who has been disappointed to join liverpool i mean that that's he's a legend for that alone I'm trying to find there's a bit there's a great bit there's a great bit of where um he obviously was although he went back to west ham uh i think birmingham were looking at him and i think tottenham sniffed around for him as well you carry on. I'm gonna find it. It's, it's, it's well, when when he was um, when Macari took over, um, one of the first phone calls he got was from Terry Venables, who wanted to take him to Tottenham, and Macari was like, "No way!" You know, he, he didn't even want to lose Paul Ince, but in the end, he relented after the reception Ince got at Stoke. Um, but there was no way was he he letting Julian Dix go to Tottenham. No, I've got it. I'll, I'll bring it up. This is brilliant. So, 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 so apparently the, the story went, the story went that, that he was playing a reserve team game against Everton and TC was telling him that he was going back to West Ham. And he basically went, you lucky bastard. I want to go back to West Ham as well. And, uh, and, and then he said, let's bring it in. Um, <clears throat> So this is what this is. This is the, from the interview. Good, 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 good work, that man. He said, "Listen, my dad wants you back at West Ham." I went, yeah. "That's it." I, that's but I remember Roy Evans calling me in. He went, "Birmingham want you on loan." I went, "This, I'm 25 years old. I don't want to go on loan. I just want to play, be settled, play football." Yeah. He called me in again. He went, "Tottenham want you." I went, "Fuck off." He went, "No, <laughs> so I went, no fuck off." <laughs> so, um, and, and that that uh, that game, the the windswept game, one of his great games uh, that we won four three. He scores the header, then he hits that penalty. So many of those penalties are straight down the middle. Oh, but you, yeah, you know yeah. how many players hit the bar or are just over? 
Dixie never did that. He always no. went just under the cross. And, and someone made the point in the chat. Every time you hear that, when you run up to the penalty, boof, you could hear him. It, you know, it came through on the on the, on the recording. Boof, yeah. you know that it was like it was like I, wallop. I mean, the, the funny thing is, it, it, it's 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 difficult to say what's your favourite Julian Dix penalty because they were all roughly the same way. A bit a bit like Ray Stewart. So I mean, we had a great, you know, for, for nigh on. 20 years, you know, we yeah. had Ray Stewart and great Julian Dixie taking our penalty, two of the best ever. Tonka and Dixie. Um, but nothing will beat that Man United penalty that made it too old. Um, the, the, I call it the Radichoyu game. Um, <laughs> yeah. He'd just <laughs> he'd been at because, Harvey Nicks in the morning and he just because, managed to get yeah. back. The, he he yeah. was only on the pitch for about twenty minutes, but we were two 0 down when he came on. He, he, you know, he, he took the dive for the penalty. He scored one as well, uh, and. You know, that was a fantastic Man United team at their peak with the boys of um, of 92 had broke in. And it was West Ham that had been struggling for a period. Um, and, and it was like 95, I believe. It's another one of Redknapp's absolutely nutty teams with yeah. Paolo Futre. We're like two years beyond his best. Yeah. Right. You know, and and he, so he, he had the... It, Three Romanians, wouldn't it? So he signed yeah. Radichoy. He's home for a holiday so he could have well, the number 10 shirt. What the hell? Uh, I think he'd signed Popescu as well. I've, in, I, you know, we had the three oh, Romanians. That Ceausescu he signed. Oh, I don't no, know. No, no, that they was shot him. Um, <laughs> shot him. <laughs> I was close there. See what I did there? You talk about Romanians, for goodness yeah. sake. The um, one in the SQI, you know, it? it was like the League of Nations team. It was. Yeah, we had so it many. The league, of, so, the league of not playing for their nations team. So, um, but, you know, it was just... I think the Tottenham game was Dumitrescu's last game for West Ham and his best game. Yeah. And it was his last game. How many players have done work that? Permit because he was so Ooh. crap for us, we stopped playing him. And he hadn't <laughs> played enough games for us. Love it. To Love enable it. to stay. So he got Only one West game. One, he got two. one game to, to say goodbye. And he absolutely and he, and he played, played a blinder. One of those players who, I mean, a bit like Kane. You see how Kane played against Manchester City. Like, yeah. this is what you could have had. Yeah. And you think, why can't he play like, if you're a Spurs fan, you must be gutted when you see that. And then you see him turn out whoever they lost to the following week, Burnley or someone, where he was crap. A Brighton, like, wasn't it? I think. How does that happen? Yeah. I want to tell you the Slav and Village story because, of course, uh, Slav absolutely loved Dixie. When he came to he thought that this is Matt. And Slav was a bit of a hard man himself. And um, it, these were the days when we had the gantry uh, of the East End above the chicken run. Fantastic. Truly the most enjoyable days. And I was lucky enough to be a West Ham's commentator. We had an in-house commentator, and that was me for quite for 12 years. And I was up there, and I was there for most of those Dixie games. They were absolutely fantastic. And we'd always have this little ritual. You'd have the cameraman up there. We'd always have a laugh, and you'd have the West Ham Amorettes at half time, and you'd just think, oh, my God, when you see the cameraman practising there. Their, their rostrum shots. They used that. to warm up in my box. I mean, I don't That's, that's the wrong expression, but yeah. Not here, you know that <laughs> Take it easy. I know we're past the... Your box the, is the, uh, up, I'll tell you. We're past the nine o'clock um, mark now, Russ, but I mean... Exactly. It, I'll I keep, it, think, keep it clean. I think I used to think those girls, uh, some of these uh, fathers, that's their daughters. Yeah. Seeing them, you know, the camera... Anyway, it's another story. So it had finished the game... And we're packing up and I'm putting my notes together and we're chatting about this, that and the other and the cameraman's taking down there. And, and uh, I heard in my ear and he said, hey, check this, Mark. So I went over on the, on the monitor and they'd gone over to the South Bank where the fans had been whenever, how much before. And there, sitting in their West Ham kits together, both of them smoking, Slav and Dixie. And I said, what is that? I said, get the camera in, get the camera in. Right. And then I heard on the, the, um, uh, the, uh, on the mic, said, turn the pictures off now. Turn the pictures off now, please. So I turned the pictures. We turned the pictures off. But they kept, obviously, the live pictures went. But we looked, and I said, that is Dixie. And they're smoking. And by this time, you can already see West Ham players coming out, fully dressed, who've had their shower and gone. And Dixie and Billich are sitting on the, whatever you call it, the top part of the South Bank, both having a fag. <laughs> having a, I'm having a fag. What? what? 
is this? Yeah, but that was like, I remember when we played FC Burka Car, I think it was FC Burka Cara, and they had the little manager, he was a little, little stumpy guy like me, and uh, he went out at half time and had a fag out the front because he could, that's the only place he could smoke. Brilliant. Was he the one in the yellow tracksuit? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. What a fine <laughs> season at that game. Burka <laughs> Cara, what a superb name. Isn't that a real team? What yeah. country? That was that was Maltese, wasn't it? Maltese, the Maltese, I believe. Yeah, someone in the chat, someone in the chat's son is is having a trial with them uh, in the summer. I think it might be James Farmer or something. He's 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 got his kid plays in the foundation. He's having a trial at FC Berkakara. They were sponsored by McDonald's. Right, that's all you need to know, I suppose. (laughs) Let's let's look at. We got the Macari. This is what I'm going to call the Swindon connection. We're looking at uh, also Moncur loved Dixie, and they had a they had a good friendship when they played together. But also Macari and um, Glenn Hoddle and Gorman, and then later on those two going to England. But interestingly enough, in 1990, would it have been 1991? No, it must have been 18. I don't know when it was, but. Oh, yes, I do know. It's much later than that. It's it's September 93. This is Dix's last home game against Swindon. It's nil-nil. Um, the, the two Swindon manager and deputy who are going to become, if you like, a problem in his hair or lack of it. And Dixie, is, that's his last game before he goes to Liverpool. A very disappointing nil-nil. And um, uh, the press comments you know sometimes when you get a game and the press all seem to have written the same report and you think this is lazy journalism they've just got an idea in their head and they've all copied it and the and the story on that day and i remember it like it was yesterday virtually every paper from the telegraph to the sun wrote we're looking at two of the relegation sides for the end of this season and of course dix leaves and we with the money by two players, Marsh and um, Burrows. Yeah, Burrows. No, we, t- we got they, Chapman they as got well them. with the yeah. Dixman. And we got yeah. Chapman as well with the balance. Yeah. Um, and the very game after that, Bond sets about putting together the team that will eventually get us out of the, save us from relegation. Whereas, as, uh, I don't know, if, did Swindon go there? Only, did they yeah, have yeah. no, they went yeah. down. So they so so half the oh, the press were half right about that, but ironically, Dix, who plays that last game for West Ham in his first spell, um, I don't think Hoddle was the Swindon manager uh, at that time. He kind of took them. Oh, did you think he left? No, by I think what happened was because he, he, he scored in. They won the playoff. I think five four against Leicester. He played, didn't he? Uh, he scored. He was yeah. player well, manager. He, he, he I believe that's when he went to Chelsea, ninety three, ninety four. Yeah, because he wanted Monks to come with him, didn't he? To yeah, and I should know that because I did his first interview when he got the England manager job. Model. Yeah, which was ninety six. So he was, he he was made at Chelsea. Us wait, made us wait yeah. three hours to do the interview. So, not, not that I still hold that against. I don't know if it might have been John Gorman. Yeah, Swindon were, at, Swindon were 10 points adrift at the bottom in the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Gorman would have stayed. Gorman Hoddle stayed, would have, yeah. Hoddle would have gone. And then Hoddle, when he went to England, took, took Gorman. Gorman from wherever he yeah. was in the wilderness Sounds back right. into um, England, sort of um, haircut duties, you know. Haircut there. duties. <laughs> um, so, so we, I mean, we're not quite at, at the where does Dixie figure in the greatest ever left backs, but but was the team were the teams because Dixie, as we've seen, played in very different West Ham teams. Yeah, were the were the teams that Dix played in how important or how relevant was that to his success or failure as a West Ham player? Bearing in mind it includes all those relegations. And promotions, of course. Um, I, I think the, uh, the, the thing about it, even with the relegation times, it, it, if you look at 88, 89, so the Julian's first full season, mm. um, he, was, he was one of the better players. And for someone so young to come into a struggle, a team that was struggling, so for the first year and a half of playing for West Ham, we were shite. You know, and this is under John Lowe. So, you know, but this, but we can't, 
you know, dress it up. We were lucky to stay up, as we've said, against Chelsea, 87, 88. 87, 88. I think we were yeah. luckier to stay up in 87, 88 that we were unlucky to go down. Well, but then at the end of the day, they always say the table don't really lie. You know, mm. we were third from bottom. We had to go. It was a it was a poor, poor time. But it was also we, the first season with 20 teams. So we wouldn't well, have gone down in previous years. Because, I mean, in 7071, the first year I supported the side, we finished third from bottom. Blackpool and Burnley went down, yeah. but we didn't go down. In later yeah. years... In the bottom three, Is you're down. Yeah. You're yeah. down. And it wasn't that year. It was only two down. So it's worked for us. It worked uh, against Chelsea in 87, 88. Uh, and it worked against us in 88, 89. Quite interestingly. There, there but it, 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 perhaps it told that when Macari walked into the club, Dix would have been 20, 21. And Macari yeah. makes him... The, the captain so there's his standing and when you look at the people that were there so mm. obviously Alvin had, Alvin was having a, had had a bad time um, of it a bit of loss of form naturally because we'd gone down we weren't playing that well mm. so if if you look at it um, we, we got the goalkeeper was Alan McKnight well there's no capacity so if you look at it there's only really Tony Gale Mark Wald um was intimating he wanted to leave. Um, Frank McAvenny had only just rejoined the club in mm. in the at the arse end of '89 um, in the March. And then, um, if if you look around the likes, also the, um, who would have been the midfield then? Um, I mean, Bonds had played, but had took a step back. Uh, what did I say? Mark Wald was there. Devin Shearer had been out injured that last season. Um, a, a played a bit part player. So yeah, the fact that, that he, he stood out mm. as the player to um, to be captain at that young age of, of a team that realistically... That said as much about the team as it did about him. Well, yeah. maybe, but it showed that even Makari... Um, and the thing about it as well is that when Makari joined the club, he didn't bring anyone with him. Yeah. So he, he had... You know, it, Mick McGivern he gambled them all there. away, didn't he? Uh, Boyce. Allegedly. He got, well, uh, Boyce was there. Billy Bonds was there. Tony Cut. You know, all of John Lowell's backroom staff stayed mm. and uh, Macari. Mick McGivern resigned a bit later. So, therefore, their input would have been just as important to to point that Julian was the one to lead the club. Um back out of, of division two. So So what do you think what do you think happened when I mean McCurry didn't last long at West Ham, although his influence was considerable for somebody who was there for such a short time. Certainly more than anything that happened when Grant was there. Well us. it it I mean if you look at his signings, um that yeah. his, his signings would dominate West Ham for the next four to five years and the longevity of some of them. I, I mean, off the top of my head, I think Bishop was the last to leave and that would have been nine years later. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, when Bishop, Morley, Morley Jimmy Quinn, Colin Foster, Martin Allen, mm. uh, McClosco. So McClosco left McClosco. 87, uh, 97. McClosco. You we know, talked, we've talked about that because we've done... McCloskey, haven't we? But yeah. so, take me to the point where Bonds takes over, takes the reins of the of the misery of the of, of Macari leaving West Ham, and Bonds almost fashions a promotion season. Doesn't can't quite get it together at the end of the season. What do you think Bonds thinks when he comes along, looks at this team, sees this young upstart character who's the captain? What do you think Bonds' reaction is? Bonds, from what, what I hear, and I've heard so many different stories, didn't really want the manager's job. He didn't want it. But he took it, and suddenly the results oh, came. I mean, I don't... And, and this is the thing, is when... Um, so, Lyle sacked, it, the truth is his contract wasn't renewed. So his contract was up in uh, in the July of '89, and it, and it wasn't renewed. So, but at the end of the day, then. It, it it yeah, his his services were dispensed off. Rightly or wrongly, let's not forget 
he had relegated us for the second time. Bearing in mind, in modern times, you, you don't you only get to spend six months at the bottom of the table, and the fans want you out. That, yeah. So, uh, you know, different eras, different expectations, I suppose. The natural successor possibly may have been Billy Bonds, but he'd only just retired. You know, he wanted to coach youth football. So I think he was part of the youth setup. I think he was coaching the youth team at the time under the scholarship of Tony Carr, who, who was running the youth teams. And I suppose Bill probably didn't seem it was ready. I know Tony Carr, Tony Carr's come out and admitted, and I think it's in his book, he did apply for the for the manager's was it a job. Panic? Was it a panic appointment by West There's Tony Carr again, by the way? Don't forget, he's going to be in Westfield on Sunday signing his book. Yeah. From New, bookstore, New in Bookstore on Saturday, too. Saturday, yeah. And New him on Saturday, yeah, good point. <laughs> but but was, was Bonds, as manager, a panic appointment by the West Ham directors? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think it was panic, because what had happened is, so we we got a club here that... We'd had five managers in 90 years, four of which had played for or been part of Thames Ironworks West Ham United. Now, in 90 years. So we'd had Ron Greenwood. Um, West Ham were the only club Ron Greenwood managed. Apart yeah. from, so he was under 23 coach at Arsenal. Came to us. From team. England. Thank uh, 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 Sorry. Uh, no, he was the Arsenal youth coach um, and doing England at the same time. And that he'd, he'd got to know Bobby Moore and then took the West Ham job because he knew Bobby Moore was here. You know, managed West Ham for 15, 16 years, handed over the reins to John Lowell. So we'd gone all that time. They brought Macari in because, you know, the relegation was a financial disaster. It needed a, a, something to sort out. The problem with... Macari came with his baggage. I don't want to go too much into it. I'll explain all that later. Uh, I'm doing something, so I don't want to go give too much away. Got Macari came, Gamblers yeah. Anonymous. So which is Macari came with baggage. It all it goes south. And then they have to turn to Billy Bonds. Uh, or they have to turn within the club, because Macari's gone in the middle of February. So what so, are you going to so do? Anyways, Bonds, is, Bonds is the perfect appointment, because it's well, saying, OK, we're admitting, hands up, we made a mistake. We're going to get the most obvious through and through well, West Ham man well, to manage. I, keep the fans happy. Ah, keep the fans happy. Did the board make a mistake? Who knows? Because at, at the end of the day, the, 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 the story is a bit different. The 12 year old Jose well, Mourinho was up for becoming our manager. So, but they never had a 12 year old manager before. No. But, I mean, we'd, we'd, Bonds was there. And the club was desperate. You know, let's face it, it was off the back of... We, we, we were still halfway through a League Cup semi-final and we're 6-0 down at half-time. You know? <laughs> that was... I remember that. That's yeah. so But so, well, uh, we won the second leg 3-0. Yeah, and, uh, and I swear it, uh, we hit the post as well. <laughs> they could have yeah. made it. If we'd have got the full... Like, well, like we do every game now. Yeah. I, I mean, this is the thing people don't... You know, it's hard for those that, that go to London Stadium and see 60,000 to look back at a time where I think that game, oh, if there was 20,000 there for the return leg, I'd be surprised. No, it was under 20. Oh, look, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Let's, let's, we, don't have to, we don't have to speculate. We, we can have the actual facts here because we don't <laughs> want to upset West Ham like, if, like anyone's watching us. <laughs> you never know. So when would this have been? Yeah, so I've got it. Right, so let's have a little look. It, I, it was like it was an half empty up some part there. Oh, I could say it was it was fifteen thousand four hundred thirty-one. I reckon. There you just, go. Just guessing. Just guessing. Fifteen thousand four hundred thirty-one. Yeah. Do you know what? You're absolutely right. What a fantastic yeah. guess. And at Oldham uh, in the, in Oldham's tiny little ground, there are only four thousand more in that one. Was yeah. that our lowest attendance of the season? Let's see how we finished the season. Well, our last home game, we had twenty-two thousand against Wolves which we won 4-0, but it didn't make any difference. We were still 13 points clear of, of the chance of getting promoted. So Liam Brady's last game. <clears throat> yes. What a great game. What a, It's almost like a game in a in a glass bowl, that, because it, it didn't... How many players score a goal with the last kick in football in their career? That's a I good... Can, I good. can think of one other. 
That's that is a really good um, uh, way to end the thought on that focus on that season. So mm. Dixie scores thirteen and eleven of his goals. So twenty four of his goals come for West Ham, and this is a. I'm not trying to put a bad spin on it, but both of those came in promotion seasons, so playing against lesser teams, one might say. Um, uh, but 24 goals is still good, and, and Dixie was a very important part of both those promotion seasons. Didn't have the same uh, uh, goals from open play success in the, the top league, but then that was perhaps more for the kind of role he played. He wouldn't be joining the attack so many uh, at times, but I, I would say that um, these days in the Premier League, players seem reluctant to shoot. Don't you think a little bit? They want to almost walk the ball into the um, goal. And you don't see many of those long shots, apart from that sickening goal Southampton scored against us in the FA Cup this year, which again is one of those ones. Oh, let's hit it because there's nothing else I can do. Yeah, Bang, he hasn't scored for two bloody years. Um, but but Dixie, uh, if he hadn't been the penalty taker, I mean, this is a two big ifs, being the penalty taker and being the captain, two very important parts of his makeup. And obviously got a name for himself. He didn't miss many penalties. And he just hit the ball like Hurst did, as hard as he could. Do you see most of those penalties are straight down the middle? Yeah. Did you, didn't you notice on those on those early clips? And, and so, nothing they could do about it, innit? It's just that you, you can't try and play with it. Yeah. So, so, but, but clearly, we, we're talking about his goal scoring, his bravado, his the, the, his character. But what about him as a player? You, you did say you, you alluded a little bit, uh, and I, this, this might be one area where I disagree with you. You said that perhaps he wasn't one of the great West Ham cultured players. I would say that he had one of the most cultured left feet on a on a defender. You might say, well, that's not yeah. the same. A no, I, 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 and a I mean, player. I think his 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 range of passing. Some um, of those three balls, if you counted yeah. the assists, if the assists were counted in the old days, yeah. like they are these days, you'd see Dix would be up there. Look at the through ball that gets McAvenny the the last of his hat trick against uh, no, Forest. Not County, yeah, ninety one, ninety two season. Yeah, uh, um, I mean that's a ball hit from forty yards and. No, McAvenny doesn't have to do anything. He just runs onto the ball and it's in his path automatically. Mm. You know, that's not, a, that's not a hit and hope at all. And he's beaten the defenders because the ball lands over their heads. There's nothing they can do. And when you chase him back, that must be one of the hard... I mean, I don't know, I've never been a defender, but that must be one of the hardest things. You're chasing back and you've got someone running towards you and the ball is going over your head. What are you going to do? Take the player out or run with him? which is what normally happens. And then the player's got the, the stealth on you because he's been running all the way from the halfway line and you suddenly turn in directions and you've almost been defeated because you're facing your own goalkeeper. This was why Dix was such a good such a good player because he could hit a dead ball. I've got to say, and you can shout me down if you think I'm wrong, I really think there were aspects of Bobby Moore in his passing from defence, Dixie. Because Moore was a guy who could hit a ball, a dead ball from 35 yards to a player's feet. And Dixie, on occasions, uh, I mean, was Yeah, a I mean, I can see that. If you look at um, the fourth goal in the World Cup final, Bobby Moore picks the ball out, drifts out left of the penalty area, runs out, hits it. Um, what would be, uh, you Straight know, people would say long ball, but it's actually a long ball and a long pass are two different things. Long balls are hit and hope. He hits it. Into yeah. par in a Hurst run, he runs down, scores it in. Look at the England goal against Argentina in '66. Uh, uh, Bobby Moore's free kick, I believe, he gets fouled, yeah. picks up, puts the ball down, and he pings the ball into the box mm. for Hurst to run on. So that, so I, the, what you're saying there, Hurst. and I think of Julian yeah. Dix. I see this. I can. I can um, sort of see what you in, understand. What and you're trying and, to say and uh, at the same end. Some of the timing of his tackles. I mean, I don't know that I would have wanted to get into a tackle with uh, Julian Dix, but some of the timing of his tackles uh, and some of the players he was playing against, you've got to realise in his very last spot, when we talked about those two long injuries, this is a guy who had a fantastic, I mean, a fantastic, but like Devonshire, these two crippling injuries. Yeah. But when he came back, 
there were doctors who said, I mean, we've read the, the, what, the paragraphs they've written in, in Dix's book, who said there wasn't any cartilage left in his knee. He was playing bone against bone at the top level of English football Crazy. and still played for another couple of seasons. And, you know, certainly on occasions uh, held his own. Um, I mean, yeah, I've been mean, towards the end. Oh, I was at Cholton the day Harry decided to try and play him as a wing back. Um, and, and a certain Danny Mills actually tore him a new one. And we got beat 4 2. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Julian, uh, I mean, this is with his shot knees. You, you could see actually, he, it sort of seemed to have lost muscle in his legs as well. When, when you look at mm. the last, when he came back in the last times, that, um, it, I don't know if it is running um, a sort of change the way he ran, but um, you know he, he soldiered on for another couple of months after that after that Charlton defeat. But I think that was the um, beginning of the end. I know with that because you remember we had David Unsworth for a year when he yeah. was out. Yeah, yeah, Unsworth was a good player, an unsung yeah. hero. Yeah, him and yeah. Ian Pierce. I often thought of them in the same sort yeah. of. Breath. And then, of course, to replace him, we signed Nigel Winterburn. Yeah. I, well, I just I've, want to mention because his name was Nigel. I love Winterburn for having scored the winner against a good Leeds team where we won for the first time we'd won at Ellen Road for years. These days we do it for fun. Yeah. But um, uh, with that header that went down into the ground and bounced over the <laughs> yeah. Winterburn heading a goal. As he uh, said at the end of that game, you know, he there weren't too many of them in his career. No. Well, he, he did score for West Ham, actually. Um, Other than that, one. that. Yeah, it, 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 I, I swear he scored an own goal for Arsenal um, <laughs> at Watson Park in a 3 1 defeat. Arsenal won 3 1. You might be right. So, <laughs> yeah, he was one of four Arsenal players to score yeah. against. <laughs> <laughs> like Glenn Roder once scored for West Ham uh, while playing for Newcastle. In the 8 1. Newcastle, yeah. Yeah. Newcastle, yeah. <laughs> well, we got, I mean, we've got, um, we've got the, 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 the little dicks, as someone called him, there's nothing little about him at all. And that was Thomas Repka, who was very much in the dicks kind of style, although slightly crazier. He was yeah, like Dick yeah, in yeah, incarnation I, one. I um, don't think he was he was as good on the ball as no, as, um, no, 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 no he, he was, was as hard as Dix. I think we'll agree that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 managed that. in a shorter career to get more yellow cards. If only it stayed six more months, we might have won the cup. Yeah, it's, it's an input. He yeah. made his mind up though, and he was another yeah. very single-minded person. Um, but then you got um, once Dix has gone, you have got all these other players, and it, it's something. I mean, was Dix clearly um, Harry made room for Dix when other managers might not have done, and perhaps gave him a little. You said that thing about playing him as a wing back. What the hell? Um, uh, would would Dix have had the career he'd had without Harry Redknapp? I mean, we talked earlier about Billy Bonds. Were these two very important players? And, and John Lyle, obviously, who, who got him. Were I the, don't were think he would have done. I don't, and, and, uh, the, the thing about it is, I think, history's being rewritten about Harry Redknapp and his time mm. at West Ham. You know, uh, at the time, I'd, you know, nobody had a bad, re you know, there was, people grumbled and whatever but the, the, now for some reason Harry's period at the club seems to be looked downward on uh, mm. you know the old it's bonds the last time we got in happened. Europe it's the last no, time and that's what I'm saying and yeah. I think yeah. people I, I, I'm agreeing with you I'm agreeing with you yeah, I don't I'm, know why, why people is I'm, it because he managed Spurs because that's something that happened since I, he took I, Spurs I, into the Champions League for goodness sake I think you got the old bonds red net dispute you know, the, all all that, that that came along, you know, and that once he left, I never spoke after that. Yeah, do you know, it, 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 there's always two sides to a story, mm. and that's you know. We we're well, almost. Are we at? Are we at? Um, uh, if if uh, Frank Lampard gets ten, what was it? Did we say Frank Lampard got ten? So we got to say, what does Dix get? Did, did Frank Lampard get 10? I don't think he gave Frank Lampard. Who gets 10 for the left back position? I think it's Dix, isn't it? Razvan Rat, isn't it? <laughs> Razvan Rat. 
Uh-huh. I, I think I'm going to. I'm going. We we did kind of uh, originate this. I think I'm pretty sure Dick's got ten and L- Lampard got. I think we said eight and a half when we averaged it. Yeah. Out. So, so Dick's is a perhaps Dick's doesn't get ten. Perhaps Dick's gets. I mean, look. I'd, uh, let's, I'd, let's I let's go mean, Frank, Frank Lampard. Lampard. What do you give him? What do you give Dick's? This is what I say. Obviously. Frank Lampard Senior predates Russ's era. So yeah. it's me and you looking at Frank yeah. Lampard Senior. Right. Was Frank Lampard Senior hero worshipped by the supporter base? Bear in mind, he was a Canning Town boy, came through the youth setup, was, was, you know, won two FA Cups with West Ham. He'd done, you know, the glory years were with Frank England Lampard. International. England International, International twice, and the second biggest gap between two England ever. Cats yeah. ever. <laughs> uh, you know, so all that was Frank Lampard hero worship. And as a kid that grew up watching him up until I was 15, 16, no, he wasn't to me. Mm. No, because we yeah, worshipped... Uh, maybe we I was a tiny bit ahead of you. Yeah, well, uh, we worshipped Trevor Brookings. Not, not individually, you're worship? right. Yes, he was. But, but he was worshipped as part of the West Ham greats. Well you loved. Know. Well yes. loved, yeah. Not worshipped. Not worshipped. And this Not is the individual. thing. Was Dick's worshipped? Oh, yes, he... Oh, God, yeah. He was and, still... And that's why. Back. But is it because yeah. he wasn't part of a of a, of a a collective? He wasn't part of the boys of 80? Or, you know, he, you know, he was... Whereas, whereas Frank, as you said, was 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 loved as part of a a collective group, a set of FA team, because he was so much of an in, not necessarily an individual, but you know, he's played in lots, a lot of these teams who weren't. You know, we didn't do particularly good, in all honesty. Um, you know, we've gone, we've we've gone down, been promoted, yada yada yada. We haven't been obviously one fuck all, um, and that might be why he is because he stands out ahead of the crowd. In terms of the people, I mean, there's, you see Ludo, and but you know, it's more. It was more individuals rather than a Boys of '86 collective or or something like that. So that might be it's why been, he was idolised. I don't know. Finished higher, if we make this the case, he may not have won the FA Cup with West Ham, but he finished in the team that finished in the highest position since '85. He played twelve games, didn't he? So fifth, fifth in 1990, but he, but he is in that game. He's in that team, and that team has become it's Harry Redknapp's team, and, and Dix was part of that. Admittedly, perhaps a, a sell by date had been reached, but he was still played in that season. And Frank Lampard, the best he did was sixth in 72, 73. Um, so it's close, isn't it? Sixth, fifth. Um, so there's not much between them, but perhaps Nigel's point is mm. the way the fans saw them was different. Yeah. Dix was more of a hero for the fans than Lamp- Lampard was more of sort of a, a part of a successful side. Mm. Success. Well, I mean, the fact is, obviously, Frank Lampard Sr. never won Hammer of the Year. That's he a never good won point. It in, in Dixie career. won it three times. Four, four this times. This goes to what you were four, saying about three times. Oh, three times, sorry. Three times. Definitely anyway, three. So yeah. Definitely three. Um, um, and and over and over two periods as well. Mm. Um, and and did did Cotty win when he came back? Did he win? No, Amory? no, he didn't. He never won him already. Uh, no, no, that is it. So did did Machiavelli win in eighty five eighty six? Who won it in eighty five eighty six? I'll have a look. I don't even think it was Frank McAvenny, strangely. No, I don't think. Uh, 85, 86. Oh, I'll have a look. 85, Give me two secs. Give me two secs. Give me two secs. 85, oh, it was Cotty. It. Cotty won it. Cotty oh, won it. And that McAvenny yeah, was did. second. I thought he did. He scored 27. McAvenny scored 28. But Cotty won it. Won the um, won the award. I don't know, perhaps because he played for West Ham longer. I don't know. But again, well, he, he was, was, well, he, 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 he was runner-up the previous I, two my seasons. My theory is about that Tony Cotty winning that. And this is my theory. In that Frank on. scored the bulk of his goals before... In the first half of the season. And Tony scored the bulk of his goals yeah. in More the running. On telly. Yeah. And when therefore, he's... when you're filling your form in, yeah, for Hammer of the Year. He's in your mind. Right. And this is the thing about the PFA Footballer of the Year. The yeah, PFA February, Footballer yeah. of the Year is done at the end of January, beginning of February, yeah. not at the end of the even though they award it April, May. And sometimes you go, Really? <laughs> yeah. And what you forget <laughs> is, is that that bloke had been outstanding from August to January. <laughs> I still I come back to Scott Parker 
playing, what was it, 13 games in a season or 15 games in a season and being player of the year. And you think... But Stuart That's... Robson, if you look at when Stuart Robson won it, if you look up then, Amory of the Year, I swear it was Stuart Robson, uh, yeah. 89, 90... 88, the... 77. 88, 87, 88, well, I think, yeah. What, Stuart He's Robson? Correct. Yeah, but did he not only play, like, a handful of games? Or... Let's have a look. 88... He played more uh, games in that season. No, he played the, no, it was the following season. Yeah, he played a handful of games. Yeah, because no, right. that was when he got injured. I know yeah. he, he came it's back. So, so what, what are we saying? Are we actually going to, on this uh, program, uh, are we going to put forward this theory that maybe there should be two votes for Hammers of the Year, Hammer of the Year, first halfway through the season, <laughs> second at the end of the season, then averaged out? <laughs> to, to, would that be fairer? Because people, like you say, like McAvenny got a rough deal out of that because he scored all his goals in the first other season when there wasn't any telly. And then Tone thought, well, the cameras are in right. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, yeah, no, I think you just vote for it at the end of the season. At and, the end. Yeah. Uh, so, who's hammer of the year this year, by the way, before we go to the, the final analysis? So if you had to stop the season now, who is hammer of the year? Declan Rice. Who else? Is um, there any other contenders? Bowen would be the other. Bowen, contender. yeah. But I think well, his well, injury, his, his injury, his injury, yeah. His injury now has has put paid, but he can still. I mean, uh, he could be back. Be back, be back for Leon. Not I think. He could score yeah. the winner in Seville. Yeah. Against Glasgow Rangers, here it comes. Yeah, oh, yeah that'll teach you not signing me. You had your chance. Well. Three goals for Jared Bowen in the Europa exactly. League final. Yeah. As West Ham well, opened tell you, up their opponents by five goals to one. Well, Le well how Leon. How did they turn around that 5 0 home defeat against Leon with that incredible comeback in the last 10 minutes? I was going to say, I was gonna say Leon, Leon have already got one over us already because they've signed Tete from Shakhtar the next on a free transfer or on a loan deal. And we were after him as well. Sh uh, you could week. say that we were yeah. only pretending we did it deliberately so they'd sign him and he'd have a mayor decided just now both the games i don't know if he's very i don't know if he's eligible he's cup, play tied. Him, he's cup tied i think he's yeah, cup the tied, premier yeah. league won't let anyone sign anyone anyway so but but, but the efl did didn't they sheffield united sheffield united signed a russian yeah but it, that was it, to get them to shut up about the six million <laughs> <West Ham. laughs> about the tevis deal shut up about that <laughs> we know you be us three nil you idiots what do you want <laughs> money as well idiots. i'll tell you what it was a damn sight more than six million quid yeah well yeah i suppose so what staying in the premier league yeah you bet your life still if they hadn't sacked Pardew in the beginning and if they hadn't Sign those two Argentinians without telling him, and his big plans were there to turn us into a Premier League winning side. Anyway, that's another story for another day. So, Mark out ten for Julian Dix. What a great, what a great player he was. What do you think, Nigel? What are you giving him out of ten? Uh, uh, for me, he is the all-time greatest left back to play for West Ham, so he can only get a ten. Russ. Oh, I, I mean, he's in my hammers eleven. He's the one I, I he was. He scored the first goal I ever saw at West Ham, oh, um, he's which just fell over. Sorry, yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. You couldn't believe he gave him a good mark. He just uh, literally <laughs> fell flat on his face. That, that's like some weird, like voodoo shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I better text him if he's all right. Yeah, he's um, gone. <laughs> he's gone again. Yeah, um, but yeah, he scored. I mean, it was it was in the it was the highlights reel. It was the um, the Oxford United two two he scored. So he's always going to be a ten for me because he's Julian Dix, and he, he my, said my he's been on this. My commentary said on that second goal, what a clean hit when it clearly comes off the knee. <laughs> he one it. of those Oxford defenders <laughs> over the, the kick who had it covered. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I would put in the proviso that he did score some of his great goals against lower league opposition sort of thing. And he was fortunate with the people who managed him and he came in at the right time and he was made captain uh, 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 at a younger age than he might otherwise have been because of an ambitious manager. But um, every player deserves a bit of luck. And if you put that against the poor luck he had by these terrible medical decisions about his knee, I've got to give him 10 as well. I mean, Frank Lampard did not have the same amount of injuries. 
this is me talking it out, talking him out of my own eleven. But he's in that because of my age and the fact that I watched him as a young kid, and he has that indelible impact on my mind. But um, but I've got to give Dixie ten. I mean, uh, put it another way: you ask yourself the question, will there ever be a left back like him? I mean, we've got to hope that how lucky that would be. I think in time to come, people will say what a great left back Aaron Cresswell was. Um, when it's, it, when it's, he, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think he's I, a I don't great think, player, great yeah, West Ham player, Cresswell. Yeah, underrated. It's very underrated, I think, now. But I think with Julian, Julian, it's all but eras, isn't it? I don't think Julian would be the Julian Dix because the aggression side was 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 a part of his game, um, and obviously now you can't but as do Nigel that. said, he corrected that in he his did, second. Yeah, stint. but still, he, now even even with a, oh, even with a strong oh, tackle, you get you'll get a book in, and with VAR, well, you've and, seen a lot of red cards yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot. Of those, to be honest, a lot of those penalties, if you if they went to VAR, wouldn't have probably happened. The one that Hugo Porfirio jumped over him in, to fall into the box. Yeah, the one, you know, the one that, that would have been chalked off. Yeah, the Hartson <laughs> is, is fouled, but not before the defender comes in with a perfectly timed tackle to take the ball out of play. Yeah. Um, but then again, you could say if you look at Dix's tackle against Steve Ball, I mean, Steve Ball is, is out. Outrageous! He's rolling around and writhing. I mean, he was very, it's very much a Premier League player reaction. And of course, that was that was at the down at the end where Wolves were having the stadium rebuilt. And so I think the referee suddenly thought he was wearing a hard hat and on some building site. So he, he looked at Dixie's face. Oh, right, you're going, mate. You can't do that to Steve Ball. And Dixie's like, ah, I wish, I wish I was really good at, t- at uh, uh, lip reading. Because some of the things Dixie says in that little, when you can see when he's going yeah. off, he's going, you kind of want to say, please, let's have the. the. I did ask him what, when we interviewed him to go through all the footage and tell us what he was saying. And he said, you know what it's going to be. We didn't <laughs> film any of that, unfortunately. Oh, bless but, um, well, and, and let's also say, I, I know this isn't part of what makes a player great, but. What an absolutely lovely bloke! What a well, I think that does, Martin. Though I think that does bloke. I think that what does that does make a difference. I think in terms of the the, the player off the field as well, because you you mentioned we had, we spoke about Bonzi and Bonds was you know was such a quiet well he's quite such, such a, a lovely, lovely man. man. Always talks about the fans. You ever exactly. do an interview with Bonds, he will not have oh. that a, a minute of that interview go without him referring to the well, exactly that. and it's the same with, with trevor so trevor it's the same yeah. as, as crossy well, and bond and I mean, then, I, I, I I a bit controversial here oh hello go on and in way up if, if you look at the way go for mark it. noble dealt with a protester <laughs> on the pitch to the way julian <laughs> dix and he's gonna say that dealt with a protester <laughs> on the pitch um can we have the, uh, the the whys and the wherefores of that? Take us well, it, that. it was a home game against Everton. Fans, you know, we were protesting against the Bond scheme. Yeah. A, a, a fan runs on, takes a corner flag. I think he came out the corner of the South Bank chicken run. Runs on, takes the corner flag, plants it, uh, it sits down in the centre circle, sticks it in the ground. And Julian Dix, rather than, you know, coming and manhandling him and throwing him about, and everything, you know, uh, I think him and Martin Allen go up and talk yeah. to him. Martin Allen, I think, sits down with him to talk to him. And, and Julian sits there and talks to him. And, and there's no animosity towards that fan. I think they understood what the club was going through, what was happening. And, you know, and it was all about, you know, it, it, it could have gone a certain way and it didn't. Mm. And then, you know, we got... No, did the rugby tackle. You know, yeah, you know, for, you know. What, mm. <laughs> so this is what we do our Mark that. Noble program, which is clearly going to be at the end of the season, for which we're hoping. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe Nigel will be busy that week. Yeah, well, yeah. no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> only got Mark Noble. <laughs> you won't be in Croydon that week, that's for sure. Just talk to yourself out of that one, Nigel. Love it. Love there it. you go. But, but a oh. really good point, actually. I'd completely forgotten about that. Mm. Um, uh, Martin Allen and, and Dixie. Just sitting and talking to the bloke. I mean, that's really, that's really quite moving, isn't it? And that does no, it, all it, his aggression. Yeah. What, a, what a bloke! What a man! What a lovely man! And, mm. and uh, no doubt, those who've, who've followed you, Russ, since you put all this together, will remember your interview with Dixie. And and you know, it's no different. And you've only got to mm. see his family's um, tweets if you follow them on on Twitter. 
absolutely outstanding stuff. Really, yeah. wonderful. Lovely man. So it looks like we obviously must have managed it against Leon. We seem to be celebrating. <laughs> Can't believe that. I didn't. I haven't been watching. Have we scored three goals? I Maybe one watching. In they look very. Time. They look very happy behind you. That's for sure. I mean, what? They look very happy. That's unbelievable. Oh, fair play. Fair play. And Yarmolenko, blimey, he's going to be part of it as well. How brilliant is this telly? I've got to take, I've got to send it back, unfortunately, tomorrow, so I don't get to see how we get on in the semi-finals. That was part of the deal. I only got it for two weeks. <laughs> but there you are. So it looks like we're Very in the good. semis anyway, but they're just waiting to see if we've got Eintracht Frankfurt and Fair Barcelona. Enough. We Fair know enough, Eintracht Frankfurt. <laughs> Fair what are you, are you seriously doubting me? Oh, Martin, shush now. <laughs> <laughs> right, time for me to go to bed now. Yeah, I think um, so. You, I you mean, are. you've got you've got the game on Sunday. You need to get your beauty sleep in time for that. Oh, okay, I I need that's long gone. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh thank, thank you, both of you. A love, another lovely evening. Yeah, what, I've loved it. Yeah. Joy to talk Cheers. about it. Great Cheers, duty. gents. Let them three points I've got for speeding will be well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> But doesn't that take you over, though, Nice. No, I'll be, be all right. Drive to work <laughs> Unless I've got another free going through the dark <laughs> tunnel at 150 miles an hour. Just make sure you pay you pay your toll before midnight tomorrow. You'll be all right. Don't oh, worry about that. Yeah, Brilliant. I know we got it. Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, as always. Um, we'll be back here tomorrow with lunchtime shows and all that type of stuff. And obviously, oh, getting ready for the Everton game. Christ, Sunday, isn't it? Everton on Big Sunday. Big Fat We've got Frank. Big Fat Frank. Couldn't catch. Oh, exactly. Forget, um, people oh. get to the game early and meet the pearly kings and queens. Exactly, the pearly kings and queens, and if we'll you've be never interviewing seen them. The pearly king and queen, you have to be there. So the pearly, exactly. pearly king and prince of Highgate. Yeah, true. It's the and prince of Highgate. I mean, and Marlend Mar Mar as well in it. Marlend. Yeah. Well, the Marlend will be eating jelly deals. The one at Highgate will probably be on the prawn cocktail. Um, oh, you see, Mark, it's, there we go, Nigel knows. And we'll be interviewing them on the channel as well. Yeah. So that'll be fun. It'll be the poshest pearly king in the world, Highgate. Dear, oh dear. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, what's Highgate got to do with pearly? Anyway, I don't, I don't understand. It's, it's, per, it's the pearly kings of Highgate and Marlen, father and son, and the nine-year-old grandson, the pearly prince of Highgate. But Ringo Starr and Lulu used to live in Highgate. That's all right. I'm saying. Well, there we go. There we go. So Sorry. did Jürgen uh, Klinsmann. Just what more do we need to say? There's a great diver from the past. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll be doing that. We'll also be doing the preview for the Everton game and all that type of stuff. Don't forget, six foot two. Oh, Nigel. He has, yes. he's, he's got Nigel instead of six foot two. He yeah, is not even advertising his own <laughs> fucking website. <laughs> say. That matter, right? Six foot two dot co dot UK. Get involved, get involved, become a member and read all the good content it's got on there. And uh and yeah, that's it. That's it, gents. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much, everyone in the chat. We'll sign off. Much love. Ta da. Stay lucky. My new cat stay lucky, stay cheeky. It's my new catchphrase. I'm trying to make it work. I'll get it for a t shirt. Anyway, take care, everyone. Bye bye. See you later.